Today we will discuss about the inverted V antenna which is often the first antenna which a radio amateur builds himself. It is quite simple to build. I had also built one long long back when I started coming on air using my homebrew equipment. See how it is built. The inverted V dipole antenna needs only a single mast. That's the advantage. While a horizontal dipole antenna will require two masts. This requires only a single mast. Here we have mentioned that a non-conducting mast has to be used. If you are using a conducting mast, then the mast should be grounded well. Then you need two other small supports. This will be a little away from the ground. And insulators are needed. There are insulators here from the mast. And this is the connection of the coaxial cable one to either side of the antenna limbs. These two are copper wires, made of copper wire, thick gauge copper wire. It can be insulated copper wire or non-insulated, no problem. And it could be single stranded or double stranded or multiple stranded copper wire, no problem about that. And uh, what you have to use is the coaxial cable. If you are using a coaxial cable, you will need a baron over here because antenna, the inverted V dipole antenna is a balanced antenna. So coax is an unbalanced line. So you'll have to put a baron over here before connecting the antenna. Then uh, the insulators we have already mentioned. The inverted V antenna has an advantage that it has a low angle of radiation. Low angle of radiation means it will go to the ionosphere very well. And when it goes to the ionosphere very well, it can be reflected down to the earth to a longer distance. So inverted V antenna is supposed to be better for long distance propagation. That's another reason why amateurs go for that. Those who, who cannot uh, build a large beam antenna. And when you have a low angle of radiation and better DX work, this is one of the best suited. Then regarding the directivity, usually the horizontal dipole, if it is a horizontal dipole like this, it will, uh, the beam will go in both directions, towards uh, the one side and opposite side also. Towards the end of the antenna, there will be hardly any radiation. In case of inverted V, since it is angulated, it is not uh, as directive as the horizontal dipole. There is some radiation in other direction because this is at an angulation. So it is partly an omnidirectional antenna. Though it is not fully omnidirectional like a vertical dipole, this has some omnidirectional property that also helps in working DX in different directions. If it is a horizontal dipole, it can go in these two directions only. Towards the end, there will be no radiation. But inverted V dipole, there will be some radiation all around. So it is useful for a radio amateur who does not have a facility for a beam antenna with an antenna rotator. You know beam antennas are costly, difficult to build, rotators are very very costly. So all those things are not there for a beginner. So when a beginner uses an inverted V, these are advantages. But some care is needed. For example, these two are very near the ground. Suppose somebody is going to test this antenna, it could give a RF burn especially when the power is high. So you would like to have some protection here. That this uh, at least, uh, suppose you are installing this mast in the garden and this end is in your compound itself. You should see to it that nobody will go and test these ends. These are the some precautions which you have to take for protection of your own people and yourself uh, when you are using an inverted V antenna. Uh, in case of horizontal antenna, dipole antenna, this is not required because both ends are quite high and nobody is going to touch it. So this is the difference between inverted V antenna and a dipole antenna. Thank you very much.